everyone. Thank you for each one, one coming. To, I don't know which way to face you. <laughs> but I appreciate everyone coming tonight. And uh, well, I commend you. You know, the last service, last Wednesday of, of uh, our year. Uh, tonight, I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to start in uh, Joshua chapter 13. Uh, for those that has, uh, have the Bible with you or your, your iPod, telephone, whatever, or whatever we use nowadays, but along with the Word of God, we'll, we'll start with Joshua chapter 13, verse 1. You're not thinking about all, all week long about being the last service of the year. And uh, it reminded me, I thought about so many things, it reminded me back when, when I was still, still working. And uh, what is it you hear out of people this time of year quite a bit? They, they, they do what sometimes? I used, it used to be entertained in me. I used to enjoy it when I'd hear people come up with a New Year's resolution. Has anybody ever made any of those? Has anybody been successful? <laughs> kind of, kind of maybe, but, but uh, you, you know, oh boy, I mean, it used to be entertaining for me, you know, they, they, uh, they would just have, be so serious there, you know, and some would say, well, I'm going to go on a diet. How many of you heard anybody say that? Boy, a lot, I've heard that over and over again, you know, I'm going to lose 10 pounds, I'm going to lose 20 pounds, I'm going to lose 30 pounds. Some of them, uh, I, they'd say, well, I'm going to quit cussing, I'm going to quit drinking, I'm going to quit smoking. And, and, and things like that. But you know what? I never, I never did. I don't remember hearing anybody say that they were just going to resolve to be a better husband or a better father. You know, it's all these other things, you know, a better Christian. And, and, uh, but uh, it used to be entertaining. They used to, uh, they used to ask me, so Kerfoot, you make any New Year's resolution? What are, you, what are you going to do different this year? I said, I'm not going to do anything different. I'm resolved to read my Bible. They said, well, you say that every year. I said, well, you ought to, too. <laughs> you know, everybody ought to read their Bible, you know. But I used to have a lot of fun with the people when I, when I, was, when I was working. But, uh, wow. Time flies, doesn't it? We're at the end of the year. It's been a good year. I thank God, praise God for it. Uh, and, you know, I can't help but all week long thinking about what a great month of December Noblesville Baptist Church has had. This has been a great month. I mean, every Sunday morning this month, we've had a message about the birth of Christ. You know, what, what the dealings with that. I mean, our Savior, the message is there of, of Elizabeth, of Zachariah, of Mary, of Joseph. And then this last week, you know, the theology of Christ. Uh, you know, the Word became flesh. I mean, it's, it's been a great month. And then as we think about the year closing and a new year coming, uh, look what our Wednesday nights have brought us. We started out the first, first week with our, our mission statement. Then we went the next two weeks with our core values, letting us be reminded of who we are, what we stand for, what we're doing, where we're, where we're going. And so that's what I want, want to kind of look at tonight, you know, uh, to think about where we're going. And so... Uh, uh, let's, let's begin reading here in Joshua, chapter 13, verse 1. Uh, j just hang in there, you understand later. Now Joshua was old and stricken in years. And the Lord said unto him, Thou art old and stricken in years. And there remaineth yet very much land to be possessed. This is the land that yet remaineth, all the borders of the Philistines and all Gershia, from Sihar, which is before Egypt, even unto the borders of Ekron, northward, which is counted to the Canaanites, five lords of the Philistines, the Gassathites, the Ashdothites, the Eskalonites, the Gittites, and the Ekronites, also the Vites, from the south, all the land to the Canaanites and Mera, that is beside the Sidonians, uh, unto Aphith, to the borders of Amorites, and the land of Giblites and Lebanon, Toward the sun rising from Belgea under Mount Hermon and to the entering in it of Hamath. All the inhabitants of the hill country from Lebanon to Mithpareh, Maim, and all the Sidonians, them will I drive out from before the children of Israel. Only divide thou it by lot 
and to the Israelites for an inheritance, as I have commanded thee. Now therefore divide this land for an inheritance unto the nine tribes and the half tribes of Manasseh, with whom the Reubenites and the Gedites have received their inheritance, which Moses gave them beyond Jordan eastward, even as Moses the servant of the Lord gave them, from Aram, that is upon the bank of the river Arnon, and the city that is in the midst of the river, and all the plain of Medeba and to Dibon, and all the cities of Sihon, king of the Amorites, which reigned in the Heshbon unto the border of the children of Ammon, and Gilead, and the border of the Geshurites, and the Maconites, and all the Mount Hermon, and all Bashan unto Sela, all the kingdom of Og in Bashan, which reigneth in Astroth, and in Edrai, whom remaineth of the remnant of the giants, of, for these did Moses smite and cast them out. Nevertheless, the children of Israel expelled not the Geshurites nor the Maccathites, but the Geshurites and the Maccathites dwell among the Israelites until this day. Let's, let's have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you again for each and every one here tonight. Father, we thank you for this time that we can have together in your word. I ask God that each one would be blessed and encouraged tonight. And Father, I, I pray that, Lord, that we'd be encouraged not to be satisfied, Lord, with, with the joy that you've given us this year, but, Lord, that we'd be determined to, to, uh, to reach out for more of you, Lord, and for, that uh, you might be glorified in our joy, Father, and might be increased. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Now, when I, uh, when I read these first 13 verses, I seen several uh, directions of encouragement and admonishments that we could have taken. When we look at verse 1, we could look at the blessings of old age, how God has richly blessed those in advanced years. You know, as we look into the scriptures, we see that uh, the words old and stricken in years. I, I, got, I got to share this. I had the opportunity to ride to Ohio with my brother and his wife Monday. So that's a two-hour drive there, two-hour drive back, and had the opportunity to talk to him about some things and about uh, that I was excited about getting to, to bring some things to you tonight. And, and I, I, I mentioned this, this part of the verse to him, old and stricken years. He started laughing. He says, you mean old and stricken in years? And, uh, you know, I, I kind of mentioned to him, it doesn't speak uh, of old age in a general sense, but it kind of expresses a period of time in one's life. You know, generally speaking, old age uh, consists of, of three stages. Uh, some would kind of, if they went around it off, would would figure the first extending from maybe the 60th to the 70th year, and then the second uh, extending from the 70th to the 80th year, which is usually called hoary or hoary head. Well, he really laughed about some of these things, you know. But then uh, the third year, uh, the third uh, extending from the 80th year to, to the end of one's life. And... Uh, that is what the scriptures refer to here is, as one stricken in years. So uh, we see here it's at, at this time, the closing stage in the life of Joshua, that he'd now arrived at. And, uh, you know, when I, when I personally, when I think of the closing years of one's life, I'm reminded of the 71st Psalm. I've probably uh, shared it with some people where, where David says in verse 9 of Psalm 71, he says, cast me not off in the time of old age. Forsake me not when my strength faileth. Then over in verse 19, he, he says, Now also, Lord, when I am old and gray-headed, forsake me not till I have showed thy strength to this generation and thy power to every one that is to come. Uh, and uh, David, he did not want to quit. He did not want to quit bringing glory to God. And because he says over in Psalm 73, uh, verse 24, he says, Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel then afterwards receive me up into glory. And, and so he, 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 uh, he lets us know that as far as he's concerned and as far as every one of us is concerned, it's from the time of birth till the time that the Lord calls us home. It's a time to bring glory to God and to receive his blessings, to bring glory and honor to his names. But, but when I think of the closing years too, all people, all people of all ages, but especially older people, should set themselves to do quickly what must be done before they die, unless the death prevent them. 
We're reminded in Ecclesiastes chapter 9, 9, verse 10, it says, Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. For there's no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave whither thou goest. And again, I say all of us need to do quickly that which, is, which needs to be done. Because uh, in a year from now, we're not all guaranteed that everyone's in this room to be back here on our last Wednesday service next year. There's, there's no guarantee uh, that we'll have another year to witness to our loved ones, to tell what great and mighty things the Lord has, has done for us, what the Lord has done for you. Uh, you know, we need to start uh, today. You know, tell the one that's close to you. You may be lost. You know, people need the Lord. And, and to hear of his mercies and to hear of his grace. That's one direction we could have taken. And there's another direction we could have taken also. We could look at the end of our text in uh, verse 13, where Joshua says, Nevertheless, the children of Israel expelled not the Geshurites, nor the Machathites, nor the Geshurites, and the Machathites, says, dwell among the Israelites until this day. Well, we plainly uh, see a warning of separation. You know, the scripture's just full of admonishments. Not to let too much of the world in. You know, I know I'm getting older, but it seems like to me the world just is spinning today with uh, all the increase of knowledge. And, and, it's, and it's hard to keep up. It seems like sometimes in some places that that uh, that's church trying to catch up with the world instead of just following Jesus. There's just so much going on. It's so fast. We need to be careful for that. The Bible, the Word of God, uh, speaks throughout uh, gives us admonishments not to let too much of that happen. You know, we're separated unto God. We're sanctified. We're set apart for his service. You know, you're not your own. You're bought with a price. And so uh, I'm going to read a few verses here just kind of give us an idea here. And Joshua, over in his chapter 23, he says, Else, if you do anywise, go back and cleave unto the remnant of these nations. Even these that remaineth among you and shall make marriages with them, and go in to them, and they to you. He says, know for certainty that the Lord your God will no more drive out any of these nations from before you, but they shall be snares and traps unto you and scourges in your sides and thorns in your eyes until you perish from off this good land which the Lord your God hath given you. And, and, and I, I think of that, I say, when, when the day that I got saved, the Lord put me on good ground, and we, and we don't want to disturb that, new, that good ground of, of walking with the Lord. Numbers 33, verse 45, he says, But if you will not drive out the inhabitants of the land from before you, then it shall come to pass that those which you let remain of them that shall be pricks in your eyes and thorns in your sides and shall vex you in the land where you dwell. The book of Judges, chapter 2 Verses 2 and 3, it says, And you shall make no league with the inhabitants of this land. You shall throw down their altars, but you've not obeyed my voice. Why have you done this? Wherefore, I also said, I will not drive them out from before you, but they shall be as thorns in your sides, and their gods shall be snares unto you. And, and so we see so many admonitions of the Lord, for, uh, uh, his word, separation but you know when I, I looked at just these two thoughts uh, we see the strong admonishment, admonishment for separation and in verse 1 we, we see the admonishment to realize that time is short and we need to be busy about the master's work you know we need to just to serve the Lord uh, your whole life be, and be separated unto him but as I looked at the last part of, of verse 1 here, where we're told, There remaineth yet very much land to be possessed. I thought of the walk of a Christian. I, th I thought of how it is a walk of going forward. I thought how it's a process of growing in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, we're reminded in Romans 8, verse 29, For whom he did foreknow me, he did also predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. And I, I believe, uh, I know for certain if we examine ourselves, we'd see that we're far short from the image of Christ. 
There's not one in here could hold up their hand and say, I'm, I'm like Jesus. He's ho- I'm just as holy and righteous as he is. Not one. We have a long way to go. There's a lot of new ground that we need to cover before we could ever come close to the holiness of Christ. And we know that ultimately that will not happen. Not till uh, we reach that point where Christ calls us home. When he descends from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, the trump of God shall sound, and the dead in Christ shall be rise first, and we which are alive remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. But until that time, until that trumpet, until that shout, we're not going to be able to be like Jesus. But brothers and sisters, what I, want, why I say that is, I know it's God's will that we strive daily to reach that mark, the mark of his high calling. And to reach the loss for Christ, we need to grow and we need to walk on new ground as Christians. So I've been entitled uh, a short message tonight uh, for us, it's just walking on new ground. Walking on new ground. Now, new, what do we think of when we think of the word new? Well, new equals freshness. As in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, where it tells us, if any man be in Christ, or new creature, old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new, become fresh. Uh, the old sin is gone. But new ground, what's new ground? You may have any idea what, what new ground is, what comes to your mind? Uh, new ground, brothers and sisters, is some place you've never gone before. It's someplace farther than you've ever been. And as we approach a new year, we should have a desire to go farther this year in our walk and service for the Lord as individuals and as a church body. But to do this, we, we need to ask ourselves some questions. First question I think is fair for us to ask, where are you going with your ministry? The ministry you know that the Lord has given to you, the gifts God's given you. What are you doing with those? Do you know what they are? If you, if you don't know what they are, uh, just ask God, what will thou have me to do? I think number two, a fair question to ask is, where would you like to go with your ministry? And, and what stands before you in, and that goal? I think th- number, number three, a, a good question we could ask ourselves, where does God want you to go with your ministry? We need to take time and to pray and seek his will. And where are you in your ministry? Where are you in your walk with the Lord? Where are you in your prayer life? Where are you in the service of God? I believe if we all examined ourselves honestly that we would see there remaineth yet very much land to be possessed. So in going forward for the Lord to accomplish this, there's some things that we need to do. There's some things we need to understand and not forget. So now uh, the message begins. I've got five little points that I want to bring tonight. Point number one, sin must be dealt with. Sin must be dealt with. You're not going to walk on new or higher ground with sin in your life. It's not going to happen. You say, well, Brother A, what do you mean sin in my life? Well, If you can't think of any, all one has to do is just look at the Ten Commandments. That would be a good start. Thou shalt not have any other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven images. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Honor thy father and thy mother. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witnesses against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet. Did any of these remind us of anything? You know. That's how hard it is to to, to see whether or not uh, you've uh, sinned anything. So how about the last time that you earnestly prayed to the Lord? I say that you earnestly prayed to the Lord. Not just thank you, Lord, for the food and, uh, and my brothers and my family. But how the last time that you prayed, did he remind you of anything that was hidden? in your heart. Sin's like rust. Sin's like rust. I'm going to read you an illustration from the book of Knight's Illustrations. 
and that's the title of his illustration, Sins Like Rust. He said, I heard a story once of a teacher who gave to one of his students a young lady. Upon her graduation, a beautiful pen concealed in a box with instructions not to open the box until one year had passed. At the end of the year, the young lady, with great desire to see what her teacher had given her, opened the box, and to her surprise, when she looked in, she found a piece of jewelry, no longer beautiful, but dirty and covered with rust. Under the pen, she found a note that said, just one year ago, when I put this pen in this box, it was a beautiful piece of jewelry with just one tiny spot of rust. But in just one short year, has destroyed it and made it useless. My dear one, that is just the way with sin. Sin left uncared for. One little sin can destroy one's testimony and service for God. We must not let any known sin go unchecked. We must repent of any known sin today. Or we will become like that once beautiful piece of jewelry unfit for the master's use. So that's one of the things we need to to, to understand and know if we're going to walk on new ground, sin must be dealt with. And after we deal with our own sin, number two, we must deal with the sin of others. Yeah, believe it or not, as much as we love everybody, other people sin too. And don't be surprised someday if, if, if someone sins against you. And, and so when I say deal with the sin of others, I'm talking about forgiveness. You know, we've got to have a forgiving heart if we're going to walk on new ground. We're, we expect to go farther in our walk with Christ. We need to be, be reminded of what Paul wrote the Ephesians in chapter 4, verse 30. He said, Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, where, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking put, be put away from you with all malice. And be you kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. James tells us in chapter 4, he tells us to humble ourselves in the, in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. You know, to be tenderhearted, for, forgiving of others, we need to be humble ourselves, and when we do, the Lord will lift us up. And we look at the last part of Ephesians 4.32, it tells us that uh, we are to forgive as the Lord has forgiven us. You know, in, in the example that, that Jesus left us for prayer. He tells us in the Lord's Prayer in Matthew chapter 6. He says, and forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. How does that strike the heart? You know, do, do we really want the Lord to forgive us as we forgive others? Uh, you know, I read a story uh, about John Wesley. I don't know how many of you know John Wesley. But he was traveling uh, with a general who was angry with his servant. And on the man's asking for forgiveness for his offense, the general replied, I never forgive. Then sir said, Wesley, quietly, I hope you never sin. <laughs> you know, forgiving others. Lord, forgive me as I forgive others. And, uh, you know, we read it in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 21, for even hereunto were you called because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps, leaving us an example. So we can, we can see that the Bible plainly tells us that the manner and the method of our action towards others are, are to be based on the Lord's dealing with us, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Number three, which is not surprising, the Christian walk is going forward. And uh, so we, I must read to you uh, a few verses here in Philippians chapter 3 that we're all familiar with, but this is a good time to read it. Paul writes, that I, might, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death, if by any means I might attain it to the resurrection of the dead. Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect. But I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. 
Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of Jesus Christ. Christian walks going forward. Uh, you, you cannot live in the past. And, and I don't mean to be harsh about that because, you know, we've all got precious memories. Memories are good, but we can't live in the past and still walk on new ground. The Christian walk is, is a walk of going forward. You know, if first thing, if we we're to, to walk forward on new ground, uh, we, we need to, to not dwell on past triumphs, past sorrows, and past sins. And uh, you can't live in past victories for tomorrow. And, uh, you know, you can't settle in and think that you're, you're already there, that I've done this, I've accomplished that, this has been good. Yes, it's been good, but we can't live uh, on, on that alone. Verse 10 speaks of conformable, being conformed or growing into the conformity to the death of Christ. This indicating or, or resulting in, in putting to death the self, the carnal self. Completely, as in verse 11, where he says, I might attain unto the resurrection of the death, that I'm, I must die to self, that I might live to Christ. That's God's will for your life, for, for the life of a Christian, for whom he did foreknow. He did predestinate for, for us to be conformed to the image of his son. Verse 13 here, Paul speaks of forgetting. Forgetting those things which are behind, things that are past, and then he speaks of, of reaching forth. In verse 14, he, uh, he speaks of pressing toward the mark, you know, seeking the, the perfection of the saints. And we think what's meant by seeking the perfection of the saints. In Matthew 5, Matthew writes, he says, Be you perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Perfect in kindness and love as in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 12, for the perfecting of the saints, for the, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man and to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby... They lie in wait to deceive. A perfect man, speaking of maturity, a, a mature Christian, a complete man. And for a, a true meaning of a complete man, you know, we can, we can look to Luke chapter 6, verse 35, and see what Jesus said. He said, but love your enemies and do good and lend hoping for nothing again. And your reward shall be great, and you shall be the children of the highest. For he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. He says, be ye therefore merciful as your Father also is merciful. And so, uh, verse 35 tells us to love those that don't love you. There's going to be people that don't love you that we need to love. And to be kind to them. That is a true sign of a mature Christian. When those that, that are evil and don't like you, then you can be kind to them. That's a good sign to perfecting of the saints. You know, a one who's not looking to the past, but he's looking forward, moving forward for the Lord. Because he knows that there remaineth yet much land to be possessed. The fourth thing I want to bring uh, to us is service. We're all familiar with Romans chapter 12. I've had a lot of men that I've talked with through the years said that's, that's their verse. We're, we're, Paul writes, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Service, you know, if we're to, to walk on new ground, we, we must present our bodies a, a living sacrifice unto God. A, and uh, for us to do this, 
we must give service from the heart. You're not just being busy. It's got to come from the heart. We must serve wholeheartedly. And, you know, we need to ask ourselves the question from time. We get so busy sometimes, uh, we, we want to be careful not to forget why we're doing it. You know, and, and it needs to come from the heart uh, to be uh, pleasing to the Lord. I'm, I'm going to read you another illustration. I enjoyed looking through some of these illustrations this week. They're, 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 uh, they're good. And this is illustration is from Knight's illustration called Heart for Service. It says, there are but few now that say, here am I, Lord, send me. The cry now is, send someone else. Send the minister, send the church officers, the wardens, the elders, but not me. I've not got the ability, the gifts, or the talents. Ah, honestly say you haven't got the heart. For the heart is, for if the heart is loyal, God can use it. It's really all a matter of heart. It does not take God a great while to qualify a man for his work if he only has the heart for it. And, uh, you know, where's, where's our heart when it comes to our time, our talent, our tithe, our praying, and our witnessing? Let's look at what God says about service. Uh, the psalmist in Psalm 119, what David said, he said, With my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from the commandments. And, and as Isaiah in chapter 6 tells us, he said, Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and whom will go for us? Then I said, here I am, send me. In Mark chapter 12, and to love him with all the heart and with all the understanding and with all the soul and with all the strength and to love his neighbor as himself is more than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. God wants the heart of service, your love. And to step out to new ground in our spiritual ministry. Uh, I, I tell you, I, I get so blessed what I call the special ministries. You know, there's a lot of ministries that are so special that uh, they're not known. You know, they, they, haven't, they don't serve in no position or even teach the head of a class. But uh, especially this last year, I've been uh, able to be blessed with people coming to me and and tell me what, they're, what they've been doing about uh, the, the Sunday school classes, the, the co-op classes of, of making cards and sending them to the shut-ins and to some of the seniors. And, and, and some people coming to me and, and uh, tell, uh, wanting some addresses. They want to send somebody a letter or a card. Wow. What blessings those special uh, ministries are. And because I know those ministries, what they're doing there comes from the heart. They're serving the Lord just as important, if not more, than I am tonight. It's a blessing to me when, when they tell me and ask me if they can have a part of that. Sending letters, encouraging those of the love of Christ. And here's a verse that would be good for maybe all of us to even put to heart. 1 Corinthians 15, uh, verse 58, where it says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. I have one more. And uh, it kind of goes along with service, but has a little bit uh, to it. You know, we've talked about we, sin must be dealt with, and after we deal with our sin, we, we must deal with the sin of others. And that the Christian walk is going forward. And uh, it's a, a walk of service. But we, we must use what God has freely provided for us to use. We must use what God has freely provided for us to use. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 says, But as it is written, I have not seen, nor heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them to us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of man save the Spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. 
and to possess new ground and to go on to maturity. We need to use what God's freely given to us. What he's provided for us to use. Verse 10 tells us that the Spirit of God will reveal unto us his own, uh, his own that which uh, he hath prepared for them. Verse 12 tells us that we've not received the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know what he's freely given to us to use for his service. I mean, God's given us everything we need. Everything we need. He's given us his Son, the Spirit. His word, spatial gifts. So then what can we give to God? He's given it to us everything that we need. So in, in conclusion, I started in Joshua chapter 13, verse 1, and that's where I'm going to close. It says, Now Joshua is old and stricken in years. And the Lord said unto him, Thou art old and stricken in years, and there remaineth yet very much land to be possessed. God tells him, he said, you're old. Even while acknowledging Joshua's advanced years, God still tells him about a job that needs to be done. Did any of you wonder tonight when, why I read all 13 verses, the first 13 verses? Look where Joshua was. He was old and stricken in years. And God reminds him that there is much to do. All that territory, all that land. No matter how much we've done in our Christian life, there still remains much to do. I don't care how young you are, how old you are. There still remains much that you can do. There remaineth yet very much land to be possessed. While there's still much to do, there can't be no satisfaction with a partial inheritance. God wants us to keep pressing on, yet very much land to be possessed. You know, what the land was to Israel, Jesus is to us. God wanted Israel to possess the whole land. He wanted them to possess all of it. And we're to possess all of him, all of Jesus. And to keep pressing on to have all of Jesus that we can have. So how much of Jesus do you have? How much of the Bible do you possess as yours? Do you walk in the blessings of leading others to Christ? Of answered prayer, of meeting the needs of others in God's family? So in closing, I just ask this simple question. What do we want to do with this little message tonight? I think we should want to see some transformation that each believer to grow into the, to the image of Christ, to strive all they could do to, to grow into the image of Christ. And to do that, we must deal with sin. God's faithful and just to forgive. Time's short. Time is short. Someday we must all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And will you be satisfied to say, Lord, I have served wholeheartedly. You know, that time is coming, folks. It's, it's, it's not something we just talk about. It's for sure. It's coming. And we need to be busy about the Master's work. Jesus Christ is coming again. That should, be, that should be such an encouragement to know that Jesus Christ is coming again. And on the other hand, it, it, it should also bring a, a point of urgency to, to our hearts. You know, I, I can't tell you that it's going to be, Christ won't come for 100 years yet. Nor, nor can I tell you that, that Christ won't come before the morning. But the one thing I do know, that souls are dying and going to hell. All right, all around us, close by. And God's given us everything we need to go forward. God wants us to expand our faith. God wants us to walk on new ground this year. You know, I wish every believer would feel the need and desire of the heart to walk on new ground. You know, brothers and sisters, we've got, what, three days left in this year? That's all? Then we start a new year? I've got something I want to ask of each one of you in the next three days. 
I'd like to ask for you what time you have left in this year just to spend a little extra time in prayer, to spend a little extra time in your Bible, and see if God will show you what new ground that he would have you to possess this year. Are you satisfied with the spiritual ground that you're walking on now? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you. Thank you for your goodness. Lord, the way I see it, you've given us a wonderful year, Lord. It's been a good year. There's been much done. There's been uh, new people added to your kingdom, Lord. There's been new, new uh, souls added to our work here, Lord. We've seen a lot of good things, Lord, but we're not done yet. There remaineth yet much land to be possessed. And Lord, may we not fail you, Lord. May, Lord, we keep our sin accounts short. May we deal with our sin. May we be determined, Father, to go forward using what, Lord, you've freely given for us to use for you. Father, may we be Determined, Father, to go on this new ground, go someplace farther in our ministry that we have never been before to expand ourselves, Lord, for the glory of Christ and for even for the more joy that we would have of just serving you. So, Father, I ask, Lord, for you to bless each and every one here tonight. And, Lord, may you, in their time of private with you, Lord, may you challenge their hearts, Father, for this new year, that, Lord, that we will see your kingdom grow and Christ be glorified even more. We ask these things in Jesus' name.